like, well, as long as you haven't got any um, people. People, yeah. Yeah, because I honestly don't normally let people like, film oh, okay. in my shops. The, the man doesn't work at the weekend, so uh, I really wouldn't have. So maybe it's better to pop about tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, You've been running, the, sorry, how long have you been running? Is it? 38 years. 38 years. Uh, I actually don't know. <laughs> um, the thing from the place is January of last year. I've actually only been the manager here for uh, a month and a half. I think it's going to be done better, but I don't want to rush the change. I don't yeah. want to, because um, that's just going to annoy people. Um, so, new books are coming here. Um, they are sorted into different categories and then they're kind of priced as we need to. I mean, I get the impression that there's a lot fewer than there used to be because, um, I mean, on, on Park Street you used to have George's, which was enormous. I don't yeah. know if you know about that one. No. But yeah, I mean, it, it shut down in the 70s or 80s and it was a gigantic uh, bookshop and then it, it sort of shrank. Um, so it's, it's interesting how it's changed. I mean, um, I kind of know about it from talking about people in the shop and occasionally we get sort of books donated and they've got the old bookmark. We've just sold a signed Winston Churchill sort of book at uh, auction for about £3,000. Uh, we, I mean, the books behind you, they're all sort of collectible items. And Oxfam itself has a has a very good working culture. It's, it's not very top down and managers themselves have a lot of independence, uh, especially if their shops are doing well. Um, we've often been found that we're just uh, left to, to try new things and experiment. Obviously there are some things that are, that are policy that we have to implement. Uh, well, I think Oxfam's a fantastic organisation and I love books and I like meeting people, so what better combination really? Uh, I know the organisation, I think it's a good organisation. I really love the books and uh, I can improve my English. Who decides what books you have in the store and what books are sold? So, in terms of the actual practical side of it, we have a set of the actual practical side of it. We have a book by called Anansi Emma Regional Commercial Manager, who mm -hmm. um, buys books for what we refer to in Washington as clusters, parties that buy kind of market forces, as it were, parties that buy what we see as the same perceptions. Yeah, I mean, personally, I source most of my stock through private sort of collections. Usually, it's either an individual have a relative who's passed away or if uh, There's another really good independent bookshop on um, Park Row, it's called Bloom and Curl. I mean, it's brilliant that the, the city can support so many independent bookshops. I think it's a really good, good, you know, sign mm. of a healthy culture. How come the um, books are so cheap? Uh, it's mostly remaindered stock, so... Um, remaindered? Yeah, so that means, um, say, if they were overprinted or they're a oh. couple of years old. Things that are hanging around in warehouses. Yeah. Are you an independent bookshop? Uh, well, we're, yeah, we're a chain of two. My name's Severin Anderson, and uh, my bookstore uh, is called Booty, um, which, in fact, was, I used to have a shop, is the name of the shop. I, I ran that for six years, and I kind of ran it as um, uh, a kind of collective. It can get quite disheartening in a shop as well, especially on a quiet day rainy, horrible, windy day, you'll get two or three people through the door all day. Um, it was really exciting at Christmas time when it, the shop was really busy all the time. And there's also a certain kind of person that goes to a second-hand bookshop 
And I think here you kind of reach a lot more people that would never normally do that. Um, so that's quite nice to get more families and kids and it's great to see the kids get excited about seeing the books in the store. You know, I've heard that um, physical book sales have started to pick up again. And I think people still really like to hold a, a physical book in their hand to read. There's all sorts of other things as well, like you can pass it on to other people when you finished. Um, it's also an association with the covers, or a lot of the Penguin books that actually use modern art on their covers. Sorry, I think I've got cast. Hello. Does your store do things with the like local area? saying about um, living upon the shop and being part of the local community, that was a nice little kyan that came in at the end there, which is just such a big contrast to the, the way that we kind of forced those people were talking, whereas it was very much an outside force participating in the community. <laughs> And then he just kind of stops. And me and my friend, once we got that car, we're going to get ourselves a heap of coke. And we're going to just like this. And then one guy says, and you say, and then we're going to get us one of them fancy autumn beers. father of Jamaican heritage passed away when I was young but before he passed he actually took me to Hummingbird Records um, Hummingbird Bookstore which was a bookstore a black bookstore in St Paul's in the 80s and I remember him taking me in there buying me a book um, coming out it was in a bag and we walked near the um, what is now the St Paul's Adventure Playground and he handed me this book and said when you're old enough to understand read this and it was a book called Black Americana by Richard Long, and it charted the history of enslavement. I feel that the legacy of Colston has been etched into the Bristolian psyche, this identity, and for this symbolic name change, people feel that somehow it's an attack on their identity, which it's not. You can tell a lot about a person's identity by looking at their bookshelf. Earlier today, I attended the Anarchist Zine Fair at Kabil Social Center in Easton. It marks the temporary end of this exploration of Bristol's radical bookstore scene, and although I wasn't permitted to film this final expedition, it did teach me something important. Three weeks ago, I began this project with a fairly fixed idea of what I was going to find. But it wasn't until this event, filled with unusual piercings and brilliantly sardonic political cartoons, that it materialised quite as I pictured. What I found throughout was as many definitions of independent and radical as there were stores and stalls. What unites all these places is not their outward appearance or even their political affiliation, but what the owner of Bloom and Curl, Jason Beach, elegantly described off camera as the radical act of reading. Oh. 
so yeah, just collect books from from uh, charity shops, Oxfam and HK. Where, where do you take them? Recycling. This is the end of the books. Oh. <laughs>